This is the second video in this series on the mole. And to revisit some questions from class today, we had two questions on the board. And the first question had three parts. How many moles of CO2, carbon dioxide, are in 50 grams of CO2. And so how many moles are in grams? So we're asked to go from mass to moles. To go from mass to moles, we need to multiply by one mole over the molar mass. So what is the molar mass of carbon dioxide? We list our elements, see how many are there, the atomic masses, multiply across, add down, then we can find the molar mass of CO2. So our 50 grams of CO2 get multiplied by one mole of CO2 over 44.01 grams of CO2, which is 1.136 moles of CO2. Because we have four significant figures in our 50 grams, and we have four significant figures in our molar mass. So we can only keep four in our final answer here. Part B was how many molecules of CO2 are in 50 grams of CO2. So we would start the same way. We would still have 50 grams of CO2 times one mole of CO2 for every 44.01 grams of CO2. Then, now we want to get to molecules. So we have moles of CO2. We would like to go from that to molecules. And so our last step here would be to multiply by Avogadro's number. For molecules of CO2 in one mole of CO2. This equals six point eight four one, which rounds to a two times 10 to the 22nd. Sorry, 10 to the 23rd. Molecules of CO2. C for this question was how many atoms of oxygen are in 50 grams of CO2. So we're going to start with the 50 grams of CO2 times one mole CO2 over 44.01 grams CO2. Now Moving forward in the semester, we're going to prefer to keep moles here and to convert from our molecule CO2 to whatever the other substance is that we want to talk about. Since we want to talk about oxygen, we're going to convert here from moles of CO2 to moles of oxygen. 
we know how many moles of oxygen are, are in carbon dioxide because in the formula for every one mole of CO2 there's two oxygens. Then our last step here to go from moles of oxygen to atoms of oxygen would once again be to multiply by Avogadro's number for atoms of oxygen per one mole of oxygen. And our answer here is 1.368 times 10 to the 24th atoms of oxygen. Now you may notice that we could also have taken our answer from the end of part B and if we had taken our answer from the end of part B and multiplied by two atoms of oxygen for every one molecule of CO2 then we still get 1.368 times 10 to the 24th atoms of oxygen. Now, it's not always a good idea to take a number from the middle and calculate from that, which is why you would still want to show all of your work for that next step. One problem with taking a number from the middle is that this number, this answer here, was rounded. Because it was rounded, we may have some different numbers at the end if we round in the middle of the calculation than if we wait and round finally at the end. The other thing to take notice as we show our work for all of these problems is that every value has units and a label. Every conversion factor has unit and label, unit and label in the numerator and the denominator. Moles are the units, oxygen and CO2 are the labels. Atoms and moles are the units, oxygen is the label. As we look at these conversions, you may also notice that we're only changing one thing at a time. Here, when we go from moles of CO, from grams of CO2 to moles of CO2, we are only changing our unit. We're changing from grams to moles. Here in the middle, when we go from moles of CO2 to moles of oxygen, our unit is staying the same. We still have moles, but we're changing our label. Finally, at the end here, where we have moles of oxygen that we're converting to atoms of oxygen, where the oxygen, the label, stays the same, but the moles and the atoms change. So then question two from class was how many moles of C6H12O6 can be made from A10 grams of hydrogen. So here we have grams of hydrogen. The key to relating this to any other quantity is to go through moles. And so to convert from grams of hydrogen to moles of hydrogen, we need to know the molar mass of hydrogen. The molar mass of any element is the same as the average atomic mass on the table, on the periodic table. And so here we're going to use the 1.01. Now the 1.01 would be fine if we had fewer significant figures in our starting number. But since our starting number has four significant figures, we want to try to use a molar mass for hydrogen that has at least four significant figures. So we could, instead of using 1.01, we could look up a different value, and maybe we would find 1.008, which would give us four significant figures, and that would be a little bit better than in this calculation. So 10 grams of hydrogen divided by 1.008 grams of hydrogen per mole. Now we have moles of hydrogen, and the question is asking for moles of C6H12O6. So, in one mole of C6H12O6, how many moles of hydrogen are there? There are 12 moles of hydrogen in every sugar molecule here, assuming it's a sugar molecule. So our grams of hydrogen cancel, our moles of hydrogen cancel, 
and we would be left with moles of this sugar, which means we would have 0 0.8267 moles of C6H12O6. Likewise, how many moles of C6H12O6 can be made from 10 to the 15th atoms of carbon? And so it might be easy here to say, okay, there is one molecule of C6H12O6 for every six atoms of carbon. And then there is one mole of C6H12O6 for every 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of C6H12O6. This would come out to be 2.76763 times 10 to the negative 10th moles of C6H12O6. You may go back and say how many significant figures were in that 10 to the 15th. Well, there's really only one significant figure there. So 3 times 10 to the negative 10th moles of C6H12O6 is really how many moles we have. If you move the decimal two more places to the right, then you have to increase, you have to decrease the exponent by two. And so you could say 300 times 10 to the negative 12th. Why would you want to say 300 times 10 to the negative 12th? Well, because then if you remember your SI prefixes, you could also say 300 picomoles of C6H12O6. Pico is a little bit smaller than you need to know. It's just to illustrate an example where you could choose to change from scientific notation back to an SI prefix if you so desire. Did I have to approach this question this way? No, I could have said 10 to the 15th atoms of carbon and I could, could, could have converted from atoms of carbon to moles of carbon and then from moles of carbon to uh, moles of C6H12O6. So again, in many of these cases, there is more than one way to do the conversion when we're talking about elements in an individual compound.